Good morning, I'm Melody Slayton, and welcome to worship on this Easter Sunday. Please be aware that we are expecting a full house this morning, so please be considerate and slide toward the center of the pews to allow room for guests and late arrival. Now as you find your seat, let me share a few opportunities and reminders with you this morning. Next Sunday, April 7th, is Baptism Sunday. And if you have accepted Christ, but have put off believer's baptism, this is a great opportunity to take the next step. Contact Rochelle in the church office by using the phone number below for details on how you can be a part of this special service. The new Wednesday night adult Bible study, Beatitudes, begins Wednesday, April 3rd, and runs through May 15th at 6.15 p.m. in the parlor. Dustin will be leading the study, and we encourage you to attend and bring a friend for this thought-provoking study on the Christian life. Next week, Dustin is also starting a new four-week Sunday morning Bible study at 945 called Change Your Life in Four Weeks. The class will meet in room E288 and is for anyone not already involved in an adult Bible study on Sunday morning. Amen. Have you signed up for the Men's Ministry Game Night on Saturday, April 6th from 6 to 9 p.m.? Plan to come for an evening of games, food, and fellowship. The college basketball finals will be on as well. Feel free to invite a friend, neighbor, or coworker to join. Register on the website this week so we have plenty of food. Ladies, the Women's Ministry is offering two five-week Bible studies beginning April 12th. Grateful Giving, Thanks to God in All Things, will meet Thursday mornings at 9.30 a.m. Then on Thursday evenings at 6.30 p.m., there will be a hymn study on Then Sings My Soul. We hope you'll join us for one of these studies. The Women's Ministry is also hosting a ladies' night out at Kirby Lane Cafe on Tuesday, April 16th at 6.30 p.m. Join us for a great time to connect and get to know other ladies at first. Register for all these events, they're all on the website. This morning, while I've just had time to touch on the highlights, I did not have time to mention any of the summer camp registrations that are underway. So please make it a habit to check the events page on the website where you can find links to these events and more. Don't forget to pick up a copy of The Loop and be sure to follow First Baptist on social media to keep up with all the great ministry opportunities at our church. Now, as we prepare to worship, let's scoot together and remember First Baptist Round Rock is a church where every person in our city can experience new life in Jesus. Good morning, church. He is risen. He is risen indeed. Very good. Now, there may be some people that didn't know that. They weren't ready for it, so we're going to say it again. He is risen. He is risen indeed. We're so glad that you are here. I want to start this morning by all of us reciting, the words will not be on the screen, John 3, 16. And I want you to say the version that you know, okay? The version that you grew up with. And we're all gonna say different versions and that's okay, okay? We're gonna survive. Y'all okay with this? All right, so we're gonna stand with me real quick. And we're gonna say John 3, 16. Ready? For God so loved the world, that he gave his one and only son, that whoever Amen. I grew up learning the King James version, version of that. So I know um, begotten is only begotten son and believeth and those things. We're here today because Jesus Christ overcame the grave and he overcame sin and death and we celebrate with our Lord today. Amen. Amen. All right. So let's sing together. God so loved the world. Come to the well 
you to know that he lives today and forever. And we have an opportunity to trust in Jesus Christ as our Savior, to say, I'm a sinner, I have transgressions, but I'm trusting in the perfect one. And if we do that, we place our, our faith in Jesus Christ, then we can have a redeemed, restored relationship with our Father that was broken because of the sin in our lives. And that is a free gift to you and to me. And that's something to rejoice about this morning. And if you haven't made that decision, then maybe today could start your walk into eternity with joy, amen? Well, we're gonna have joy at this moment because as you are seated, we're gonna turn our attention to the baptistry as we share in baptism today. Good morning, church family. It's good to see y'all this morning on this Resurrection Sunday. And it's a, always a pleasure to be able to celebrate the ordinance of baptism on Easter. You know, on Easter, we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And in that, we celebrate that resurrection life that he brings to each one of us who puts our faith and trust in him. And that's what baptism uh, in many ways is. It's a public declaration of that faith that somebody has put in Jesus Christ, but it's also a picture, a symbolic picture of how we are buried in our sins. Our, our sinful self is buried, and then we are raised in new life, in that resurrection life that only Jesus Christ can bring. And so today, we are excited to be able to baptize two young ladies uh, who come today. And the first is Lily Marcos Menes. All right, 
And this is Lily, and she, uh, a while back, accepted Jesus Christ as her Lord and Savior, and she is coming today publicly to declare that to you and to follow the Lord in baptism. So Lily, is it your testimony that you've accepted Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior? Yes. Amen. Well, upon your profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism, and raised to walk in new life. And next, we have Zoe Halliday. All right. And this is Zoe, and she, too, has recently given her life to Jesus Christ. And she's wanting to come today to say that publicly that uh, she belongs to the Lord, and she wants to follow him in believer's baptism. So, Zoe, is it your testimony that you've accepted Jesus as your Lord and Savior? Yes, sir. All right. Well, upon your profession of faith, I baptize you in the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit, buried with Christ in baptism, and raised to walk. A new life. Morning. How are you this morning? Everybody good? Yeah. All right. Yeah, we had um, some fun in Sunday school this morning. If you see grade schoolers bouncing around, it's because we made resurrection rolls this morning. And it's a really cool thing to do with your kids. You get a biscuit, put a marshmallow in the middle, and when you bake it, the marshmallow disappears and you have an empty tomb. So it was a really cool thing that we did with the kids this morning, a good object lesson. So if you see them bouncing a little bit, it's okay. We gave them some cinnamon sugar this morning. So, But if you're here, welcome today. We are so glad that you've joined us today. Whether you're a guest or whether you've been here your whole life, we are so glad that you are here you may be watching with us online today, and we are glad that you've joined us online as well. In the back of the pew, you'll see a QR code that you can scan, or there's a little piece of paper in there. That's just, if you want to let us know a little bit more about you, we would love to get to know you a little bit more. If you have any questions about the church, you can ask, and we would be glad to get in touch with you and share any information that you need. And now would you join me in reading scripture? We're going to read Matthew chapter 28, verses 1 through 8. After the Sabbath at dawn, on the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to look at the tomb. There was a violent earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, and going to the tomb, rolled back the stone and sat upon it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothes were as white as snow. The guards were so afraid of him that they shook and became like dead men. The angel said to the women, Do not be afraid. For I know that you are looking for Jesus who was crucified. He is not here. He is risen, just as he said. Come and see the place where he lay. And then quickly go and tell his disciples, he has risen from the dead and is going ahead of you into Galilee. There you will see him. Now I have told you. So the women hurried away with the tomb, afraid yet filled with joy, and ran to tell his disciples. Suddenly... Jesus met them. Greetings, he said. And they came to him, clasped his feet, and worshiped him. Came to him, clasped his feet, and worshiped him. We're about to sing a beautiful testimony of the gospel called King of Kings, and it walks us through what the gospel of Christ is. But I want you to take a moment we're gonna take just a few seconds, and I want you to center your heart and your mind and your soul on God today. I know that Easter Sunday can be stressful in some ways and hectic in some ways, but you're here, you made it, okay? Or you're checking in online. And I want you to take some time and say, God, I wanna hear from you today. I wanna to experience you today. Teach me what you want to teach me today. And would you carve out the things in my life that I don't need? So if you would, would you bow your head for just a moment? And would you pray those prayers for God to work in your heart and your soul before we sing this song?
Let's stand together when you're ready. We'll sing this together.
thankful for the part. My sins are forgiven. My future is heaven. That is available to you today. Don't leave this room today without making that decision. Let's go to the Lord in prayer, ask him to prepare our hearts for his word. God, we thank you for this worship through singing. Now, Lord, we will worship you through opening our Bible and listening to the message that you bring to us. Father, I pray for anyone within earshot of this word, that they would trust in Jesus as their savior. They would let go of their life and they would give you the reins of their life. They would call you Lord, or you would be the boss. There is no greater joy than knowing you and knowing your love. Father, open our ears, our hearts, our minds. Help us to hear you. We pray this. In the name above every name, Jesus Christ, and all God's people said, amen. amen. Thank you, church. You can be seated. Amen. That's why we're here today, to celebrate what he's done and to give all glory to the Father and the Son. Man, it is so good to see you this morning. It's so good to be able to spend this Easter Sunday, this Resurrection Sunday with you all. And um, it, uh, it always warms my heart to be able to see people on Sundays and to see us um, gathered together. Uh, and Sunday, Easter Sunday is kind of one of those in the church world we call it a reset Sunday because everybody's in here at once rather than kind of being staggered one after another. And so it's so good to see you all together and to be celebrating together. As we get started, we're going to be in Galatians 3 today as we uh, talk 
talk about this Resurrection Sunday. While you're turning there, let me just remind you of a couple of big things that are happening next Sunday. So next Sunday will be Baptism Sunday, and, and that, that just means it's a special day where we're trying to emphasize following the Lord in believers' baptism. So if you've never been baptized, you're a believer, but you've never followed the Lord in baptism, we'd love to talk with you about being baptized next week, because that's something that God has commanded us to do, is that accept Him, but then also to follow Him in baptism, just as you saw uh, those two young ladies this morning. And so we'd love to talk with you about that. At the end of the service, I'll be standing out in the lobby, and I uh, can give you some details. Also, next week, I'm going to start a four-week Sunday school class. And so uh, this will hopefully lead into a more permanent class with some other teachers that are going to do a fantastic job. Uh, but let me tell you who this is for. If you already have a Bible study group, a Sunday school class that you go to, this is not for you, okay? We're going to have a bouncer at the door to send you to your classroom, all right? Uh, this is for those of you who haven't taken that step into a small group. Uh, small groups are important because that's where the care and the love and the fellowship and sharing of information, sharing life, Life on life, that's where that happens is in that small group. And all of us need to be in that kind of community. And so this is a way to kind of step into that and experience what that's like. Change your life in four weeks, and I always take, like that say, or your money back, okay? So whatever you pay on the way in, we'll give you that back if it doesn't change your life. Uh, so hope that you'll join me next Sunday as we begin that. Well, today we celebrate the resurrection of Jesus Christ. And sometimes I think the resurrection in our minds takes a backseat to the cross. Uh, we highlight and emphasize the cross so much that I think sometimes it comes at the expense of the resurrection. Uh, for example, I have seen cross necklaces my entire life, but until this year, I don't think I've ever seen a resurrection necklace. They may have been out there, but they're obviously not as prominent as a cross necklace. We emphasize the cross. We emphasize that sacrifice, sometimes at the expense of the resurrection. But we have to remember that the resurrection without the cross is ineffective, and without the cross, the resurrection is empty. These two things work together. We have to have both of those things together in order to have the full uh, benefit of salvation, the full benefit of the gospel. And on this Resurrection Sunday, we celebrate both of those things. We celebrate the cross and the resurrection. John Stark, who, who is a Bible theologian, he says this about the resurrection in Christianity. He says, Christianity is, in its very essence, a resurrection religion. The concept of the resurrection lies at its heart. If you remove it, Christianity is destroyed. That's why we preach the resurrection, because without the resurrection, there is truly no hope in our faith. There is no hope in Christianity if Jesus Christ did not come back from the dead. And so that's why we celebrate and we praise God for the resurrection. There's a song we used to sing, on, and I want to say on Resurrection Sunday 2,000 years ago, this was probably the theme. It says, the greatest day in history, death is beaten, you have rescued me. Sing it out, Jesus is alive. The empty cross, the empty grave, life eternal, you have won the day. Shout it out, Jesus is alive. So today we celebrate the resurrection, and as we look at God's word, we are going to celebrate the fact that Jesus is alive, and look at this greatest gift in history that Jesus, has, that Jesus gave us. And so we'll look at the effects of the cross and the benefits of the resurrection that we can see here found in Galatians chapter 3. So let's read uh, together, starting in verse 10, Galatians chapter 3, starting in verse 10. Paul writes, for all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse because it is written, everyone who does not do everything written in the book of the law is cursed. Now it is clear that no one is justified before God by the law because the righteous will live by faith. But the law is not based on faith. Instead, the one who does these things will live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us because it is written, cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. The purpose was that the blessing of Abraham would come to the Gentiles by Christ Jesus so that we could receive the promised spirit through faith. Lord God, we thank you for this scripture this morning. We thank you that through the power of Jesus Christ, we can find redemption and forgiveness of our sins. We can find eternal life. Thank you that the blessing of Abraham, the blessing that comes through faith can be available to all of us, all of those who call on the name of Jesus Christ. Lord, we give you praise this morning for what you have said in your word and pray that you would help us to understand it and apply it. We pray this in the powerful, capable name of Jesus. Amen. 
Well, today I want you to know one thing. If you don't leave out of here with anything else, I want you to be able to walk out of here with this one thought in your mind. And like usual, I'll have this main point, but then a few things that kind of support it that we find in the scripture. But here's what I want you to walk away with today in understanding this, is that Jesus is the only source of forgiveness and eternal life. Jesus is the only source for forgiveness and eternal life. Not a source, not uh, the best source, but the one and only source for forgiveness and eternal life. Now, I want you to understand what I'm saying. I'm not saying that Jesus or that Christianity is the only religious uh, persuasion, the only religious following that says there is an afterlife. Many religious uh, viewpoints say that there is an afterlife, but all of those say that you have to work, you have to do certain things, you have to live a certain life in order to attain or achieve entry into the afterlife. What Christianity says is that nobody is good enough to receive eternal life. Nobody could ever work hard enough, live good enough, be perfect enough to attain heaven, to attain glory, to attain eternal life. That's why we must put faith in Jesus Christ because he is the one and only one who was able to live the perfect life and make salvation available to us. With Christianity, we do not say that you earn salvation. We say that salvation is a gift to be accepted that can only be offered by Jesus. And so that's why we say this morning that Jesus is the only source of forgiveness and eternal life. Do you remember in the early 2000s uh, when the pay it forward movement was kind of a big deal? You know, like people were buying people's coffee in the drive through line. You'd go through and you'd get your coffee and you'd pay for the car, the two cars behind you. And then whenever you, the next car got up, they would say, hey, somebody already paid for your coffee. Do you want to pay for the person behind you's coffee? And, um, you know, some people would say, no, nope, I'll just take the freebie and keep going. Uh, my luck was if I I said, sure, I'll pay for that person's coffee. Then they would say, okay, well, they also got a biscuit and a hash brown and a Coke. You know, that's kind of like, that's how it usually went if I tried to, to pay it forward. But listen, Jesus is the ultimate pay it forward because he did what we could not do for ourselves. It would be as if we were in the coffee line and we ordered a coffee, but when we got there, we had no money. We had no way to pay for it. Jesus is the one who paid the penalty for our sins, who made the way possible for us to have salvation. And we receive that gift simply by taking it and accepting it and applying it to our life. He is the ultimate pay it forward. He is the only option that can pay for your penalty of your sin and now offers you eternal life. And that's what we're gonna see here in Galatians chapter three. And so I wanna share with you three things that we can pick out of this passage today. Number one, uh, he is the perfection that we could not attain, okay? This is one of the reasons why Jesus is the only source for forgiveness and salvation, for that forgiveness and eternal life that we desire so much is because he is the perfection that we could not attain. Uh, Galatians 3, 10 through 12, we read it a while ago. It says, for all who rely on the works of the law are under a curse because it is written, everyone who does not do everything written in the book of the law is cursed. Now it is clear that no one is justified before God by the law because the righteous will live by faith. But the law is not based on faith. Instead, the one who does these things will live by them. These three verses contain three quotations from the Old Testament. Uh, the first one, Deuteronomy 27, 26, says, um, anyone who does not put the words of this law into practice is cursed. Habakkuk 2, 4 says, the righteous one will live by his faith. And Leviticus 18, 5 says, keep my statutes and ordinances. A person will live if he does them. I am the Lord. These three verses combined to paint that clear picture of what Paul is trying to say here, what he is writing about. He's simply saying, look, if you depend on works of the law, you are going to fall short. We might say, if you depend on your good works in this life to attain heaven, if you depend on trying to live righteously, to do good to your fellow man, to be a good father, be a good husband, be a good citizen, be a good employee. You can try all day to do all those things, but unless you meet those standards perfectly, you fall short. If there is any mistake, if there's any sin, if there's any failure on any part, you fall short. My son Preston is going to take his driver's test this week. So be in prayer for him and be in prayer for me as well. Um, he's going to take his driver's test. And as we were preparing for this, uh, we came upon uh, this statement whenever it said how to prepare for your driver's test. The Texas Department of Transportation says, if at any time a dangerous or illegal maneuver is performed, the drive test will result in an automatic 
We have failed on some level, on some account, and there is an automatic failure. That's why we must put our faith in the work of Jesus, because he is the one who's been able to attain perfection in this life. He was able to do what we could not, to live life as we could not, to meet the perfect standard of sinlessness, and then he kept the rules perfectly so that he would not fail the test. But... Whenever he passed the test, rather than taking credit for himself, rather than saying, I passed the test, now I'm going back to heaven, he passed the test, he lived a sinless, perfect life, and then whenever he went to the cross, it was as if he wrote our name in the name on the test. He wrote our name in the blank so that we would get the credit for his righteousness, for his sinlessness, if we put our faith and trust in him. Jesus is the only one who could and the only one who did meet that perfect standard. And now he offers that salvation. He offers that perfection, the, the credit for that perfection to us. In Hebrews 10, 14, he says, the writer says, for by one offering, Jesus has perfected forever those who are sanctified. By one offering, by one sacrifice, not by sacrifice after sacrifice after sacrifice, not time and time again, not continuing even today to pay for your sins. By one sacrifice, he paid the sins for the entire world. He paid the sins for every single one of you in this room, whether you believe it and accept it or not, he paid for your sin. Jesus met that standard of perfection. And we say that he paid for our sin because the next thing that we can see is that he is the perfection we cannot attain, but he also pays the debt that we could not afford. Every one of us owes a sin debt. Because of our sin, we owe a debt of righteousness to God. And the only way to pay that debt, the only way to cover over that sin is to give our own life. But then that leads to our eternity, our eternal punishment in a real place called hell. In Galatians 3, verse 13, Paul writes, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us because it is written, cursed is everyone who is hung on a tree. When Jesus went to the cross, he paid the penalty by going and hanging on that tree and becoming a curse on our behalf. This is a quotation from Deuteronomy 21, 23. It says, you're not to leave a corpse on a tree overnight, but to bury him that day for anyone hung on a tree is under God's curse. See, because of our sin, we not only miss out on the righteousness and the eternal life with God in heaven, but we actually receive the opposite. We receive hell. We receive eternal punishment for our sin. See, the two things are co-equal. You either receive eternal life or you receive eternal death. You receive eternal joy and blessings in the presence of God or you receive eternal punishment separated from God in a real place called hell. There's, there, there's an equivalence between the two. That's why it's so important in this life what you will choose. And that's why Paul writes in Romans that the wages of sin is death. Listen, the, we earn the ability to die. That's, have you ever thought about it that way? We earn the right by our sins. We earn the right by our imperfections to spend eternity separated from God. There is a debt that we owe to God that we cannot pay. Imagine if you owed a debt of a trillion dollars and you said, one of these days, I'm gonna pay that back. And you worked every day, you were diligent, you were a hardworking individual and you worked every day at McDonald's as hard as you could. Listen, you can work every day, 24 hours a day at McDonald's for the rest of your life. You will never earn a trillion dollars and be able to pay that debt. We owe a debt to God that we cannot pay, but thanks be to God that through Jesus Christ, he has paid that debt. Listen, Jesus, through his work on the cross, he achieved the perfection we cannot attain. He paid the debt we cannot afford to pay. He paid the price that was on our head. He bailed us out. He paid our fine. He died our death so that we could live in his life. I want to say that again. I want you to hear that this morning. Jesus died your death so that you could live in his life. Paul describes this in Colossians chapter 2, verse 13 through 14. He says, when you were dead in trespasses and in the uncircumcision of your flesh, he made you alive with him and forgave us all our trespasses. He erased the certificate of debt with its obligations that was against us and opposed to us and has taken it away by nailing it to the cross. Look, Jesus, through his death, he paid your debt. And through his resurrection, he offers you new life. Watchman Nee, a Chinese pastor and church leader in the 1900s, said it this way. He said, our old history ends with the cross, and our new history begins with the resurrection. 
this morning, I hope that you can begin a new history by putting your faith and trust in Jesus Christ if you have never done that before. But if you're willing to do that, if you're willing to walk into that new life that Jesus offers, then I want you to understand this last point this morning is that Jesus provides the eternal life that we could not find. Jesus provides eternal life that we could not find. All the other religions of the world will say, work hard, seek uh, to do what is right, seek to fulfill certain obligations, and hopefully in the end, you can find eternal life. And Jesus says, no, the only way to receive eternal life is through me. I have found it, and I make it available to you. That's what Paul means whenever he writes this in Galatians 3.14. He says, the purpose, the purpose of Christ's sacrifice, the purpose of the cross, the cross and the curse that he endured on our behalf, the purpose was that the blessing of Abraham would come to the Gentiles by Christ Jesus so that we could receive the promised spirit through faith. The promise of the blessings of Abraham would come to us by Jesus Christ so that we could receive those promises through the spirit by faith. Listen, Abraham, before the law, he predated the law. Abraham believed God and it was credited to him as righteousness. That's why Paul quotes here, or refers here to Genesis twenty-two eighteen, 18, where God says, all the nations of the earth, he's speaking to Abraham, all the nations of the earth will be blessed by your offspring because you have obeyed my command. He put his faith in God. He staked his life on the word of God. And because he put his faith and trust in the word of God, he chose to obey the Lord. He walked in obedience to the Lord. See, the the faith came and then the obedience followed. And that's what we see in Abraham. Abraham was not declared righteous by the law because the law did not exist. Abraham was not declared righteous because of works that he did. He was declared righteous because he believed and trusted in the word of God. And this morning, you can put your faith and trust in the word of God as well. You can put your faith and trust in Jesus Christ, in the one who has been declared our Lord and our Savior, who lived that perfect life and offers eternal life to us. In John 17, three, Jesus says, this is eternal life, that they may know you, the only true God and the one you have sent, Jesus Christ. He says in John 11, I am the resurrection and the life. No one, the one who believes in me, even if he dies, will live. He said, I am the resurrection and the life. If you believe in me, even though you die physically, you will never die spiritually. Even though this body wilts and this body gets weak and this body decays and this body ultimately and eventually dies, your spirit is going to live forever. And it's going to live forever in a place called heaven with the Lord. Or it's going to live forever in a place called hell away from the Lord. And so this morning, you have the opportunity. The gift lies available before you. The blessings that were promised to Abraham, that were said that would come to his descendants, to his offspring. They have come by his offspring, Jesus Christ. You look in the genealogies in the chapter, uh, in the books of Matthew and in the books of Luke, and they trace Jesus' genealogy all the way back to Abraham. He is the promised offspring that brings the blessings of salvation. And not just to the Jewish people, but to all nations, to every Every tribe, nation, and tongue on the face of the earth, he brings salvation. The resurrection of Jesus Christ is real. It is factual. It is effective. Charles Spurgeon says, the resurrection is a fact better attested than any event recorded in any history, whether ancient or modern. A.W. Tozer said, the resurrection of Christ and the fact of the empty tomb are not part of the world's complex and continuing mythologies. This is not a Santa Claus tale. It is history, and it is reality. Listen, his death was real, but temporary. His life is real and eternal. Today, this morning, without Christ, your death is imminent and permanent. But with Christ, you can receive eternal life that starts now and lasts forever. Eternal life that has no end. Eternal life that is not only a time, but a quality. Eternal life that puts you in that blessed life, that abundant life that Jesus promised to those who he was seeking and saving. This morning, by taking your trust off of your own abilities, your own ability to live a good life, to be kind to your neighbor, to be a good husband, a good father, to be a good follower of another faith, to put any kind of trust where you can say, I did this, so I deserve heaven, or I have attained heaven. This morning, you can say, I'm gonna trust in Jesus. And I'm gonna trust in Jesus for my eternal security. I'm gonna trust in Jesus for my eternal life. And because of that trust, I'm gonna live holy. Because of that trust and because of that new life, I'm gonna live 
righteous before God. I'm going to seek to live uh, the life that he has called me to live. And even though we may live it imperfectly, when God looks at us, he sees his son. He sees Jesus. He sees the results of his sacrifice and his resurrection. I want to end this morning with a beautiful scripture in which Paul celebrates the beauty of the resurrection. And then we're going to have an invitation time and, and sing a song and respond together. And then Paul says in 1 Corinthians 15, starting in verse 16, he says, if there is no resurrection of the dead, then Christ has not been raised. And if Christ has not been raised, then your faith is useless and you are still guilty of your sins. In that case, all who have died believing in Christ are lost. And if our hope in Christ is only for this life, we are more to be pitied than anyone in the world. But... In fact, Christ has been raised from the dead. He is the first of a great harvest of all who have died. So you see, just as death came into the world through a man, now the resurrection from the dead has begun through another man. Just as everyone dies because we all belong to Adam, everyone who belongs to Christ will be given new life. For our dying bodies must be transformed into bodies that will never die. Our mortal bodies must be transformed into immortal bodies. And then our dying bodies, when they have been transformed into bodies that will never die, this scripture will be fulfilled. Death is swallowed up in victory. Oh, death, where is your victory? Oh, death, where is your sting? For the sin is the sting that results in death, and the law gives it sin power. But thanks be to God. He gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. Thanks be to God. He gives us victory over sin and death through our Lord Jesus Christ. This morning as our praise team comes, I want to ask you if you would consider giving your life to the Lord this morning. This morning, Christ stands ready to take away your eternal death and by the power of the cross and the power of the resurrection to give you eternal life. What must you do to earn it? Nothing at all. You simply cannot work hard enough, be good enough to earn his salvation. But just like a gift that we give to one another, the way you receive this gift is by accepting Jesus Christ as your Lord and your Savior, by putting him in control of your life and by trusting in his work to bring you salvation. I'm gonna ask everybody in here this morning, believers and non-believers alike, to bow your heads, close your eyes. We're gonna have a moment of reflection, and as we do, if you are a believer in here this morning, I wanna ask you to have a time of prayer to the Lord. And first of all, thank God for his salvation. Thank him for the power of the cross and the power of the resurrection in your life. Give him praise for how he has brought salvation and eternal life to you. But I want to also ask you, my fellow believers, to pray for those who do not know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior. And to pray for them now. Pray for the Spirit to have sway over their hearts even now. If you're here and you have not made a decision to trust Christ by faith, I want to ask you this morning if you'd be willing to do that today. John 1.12 says, To all who did receive him, he gave them the right to be children of God to those who believe in his name. I want you to know this morning that God wants to welcome you into his family. He knows your past. He knows your brokenness. He knows the things that you have done. He knows the things that have been done to you. He knows the dirty things, the broken things that nobody else knows, the things you try to keep hidden. And he says, I love you anyway. He says, I love you enough that I sent my son to die on the cross for those things to bring redemption and restoration into your life. You don't have to clean yourself up and come to Jesus. You come to Jesus and then he works with you and in you to clean up your life, to make that new life a reality in your life. This morning, if you would want that, if you would want Christ to bring forgiveness and salvation, restoration, hope, purpose to your life, then I would invite you to pray a prayer with me this morning. There's nothing magical about this prayer. It's not if, if said in a certain way, God has to do something. It's not magical words or an incantation. But I'm gonna lead you in a prayer. And if this prayer echoes the truth of your heart that you want Christ to be your savior this morning, to forgive you of your sins and to bring you salvation, if that is the cry of your heart this morning, then as you cry out to the Lord through this prayer, he will bring you salvation. So if that's your desire this morning, would you repeat after me? Simply say, dear Lord, I know that I'm a sinner. I know that I cannot attain the perfection necessary for eternal life. But I believe Jesus did live that perfect life. And I believe he died on the cross to pay my debt. And I believe 
that he rose again so that I could receive eternal life. I put my complete trust in Jesus for my salvation this morning. I trust him to be in complete control of my life. And from this day forward, by the power of the Spirit, I will seek to walk in obedience through his power. In the powerful name of Jesus, I pray. Amen. Listen, everybody look up here. If you're in here this morning, even if you're watching online, if you prayed that prayer this morning, then I want to say welcome to God's family. Welcome to eternal life. Welcome to that new life that Jesus Christ promises. And I believe that there is somebody in here who has prayed that this morning, and I want to celebrate that. Church, can we celebrate the new life that has come to somebody this morning? Listen, we celebrate that because we, too, have experienced new life through Jesus. That's why we exist as a church, to help everybody in our city experience new life in Jesus. And if you prayed that prayer this morning, then I want you to understand that the scripture says you have received eternal life that cannot be lost. You received eternal life that cannot be taken away. Jesus says, I know my sheep. They know my voice. No one can snatch them out of my hand. He is yours and you are his. And I want you to understand that today is just the first step of a lifetime of walking with the Lord and in increased understanding, increased relationship, increased obedience. Your life from this day forward will not be the same if you walk with Jesus. And I want to share with you how you make those next steps. I'll be in the back, out this door in the little lobby that we have back there as we sing this last song of invitation. And as we sing, if you made that decision this morning, please come find me and let's talk about the decision that you've made. If that makes you nervous, then at the very least, fill out one of our connection cards and drop it in the box and let us know. Or go to our website, fbcrr.org slash connect. Fill out that form there. Let us know so that I can follow up with you this week. Lord God, we give you praise for what you have done. As we sang in the song this morning, you are the only one. We give you praise for what you have done because you're the only one who can do it. You're the only one who has the opportunity, the power to provide forgiveness and salvation in our lives. You are our only source, our only hope. And so, Lord God, we celebrate you this morning. We celebrate the cross of Christ. We celebrate the resurrection of Christ, that reality that happened almost 2,000 years ago that is so powerful in our life today. Lord, may you be glorified as we sing this final song. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen.
to me. Sing that. Then came the morning. Then came the morning that sealed the promise. Your very body began to breathe. Out of the silence, the roaring lion declared the rain has no claim on me. Jesus, your Father God, Lord, we love you so very, very much. Lord, as we come together to celebrate Resurrection Sunday, Lord, we are reminded of what you did to live that sinless life, to, to endure that suffering, to go to the cross, to really to the point of where it was finished, but it was not finished, Lord. It was through that resurrection, through that becoming that victory over death, Lord, becoming that source of our salvation and truly giving us the opportunity for everlasting life with you. Lord, we can never lose sight of that. Understand that it will never be good enough, Lord, but it is through you and what you did for us, Lord, we have the opportunity to take that gift of salvation and treasure it in our lives and just find new and interesting ways to glorify you and your kingdom on earth. Lord, let us never forget that sacrifice. Let us never forget what you did for us. And let's bring glory to you in whatever we do and wherever we go. Lord, we pray these all in Jesus' precious and holy name. Amen. Church, it's been great to be with you today. If you feel a prompting from the Spirit, you feel this draw, and, you, and you're like, I want to ask questions. I want to talk with somebody. I just, I didn't do it. I want you to know that the it, there's still time to do that. You can still do that. You can either do that today with somebody here, Pastor Dustin, or another one of our staff members. You can contact us through the website, through email, or find someone that is a believer in Christ and ask them about that decision. Let's sing this uh, song together as we leave from this place. Yes, praise the Go walk in the 